There might not be, but this is Thursday Theorist. This isn't Thursday Facts. Welcome to Church of the Chair, where school might be out for summer, but the Institute never closes. I'm your host, E, and today, we're coming into our powers. If you're new around here, I need to give you a warning. In this series, I will be spoiling all of Stephen King's books. There's no way around it. So if you haven't read them all, I'm talking every single novel, novella, short story, everything, I'd click away now. You've been warned. Today, we're talking about The Institute by Stephen King. That fresh-faced boy you saw in the intro, he has a lot to say. I don't hate my original Institute video, so I'm going to be putting several clips from that video, the majority of the video, and then I'll be back with you guys later on to talk about viewer comments. Take it away. A couple of things right off the top that really have no bearing on anything I want to go ahead and get out. The first one is the mention of Harry Cross, who is the bully in the Institute. Of course, th this is a reference, it, it's got to be a reference to not only um, Harold Cross, no, sorry, Harold Laudner and Nadine Cross from The Stand, but oddly enough, there is a Harry or a Harold Cross in uh, The Fireman, which was an obvious reference to those two characters in The Stand. Next up, we have a mention of an Exit 181. And the whole reason I bring this up is because Stephen King, all throughout his career, he's made note of, uh, especially in The Dark Tower, the importance of the number 19. 181, if you take the 1, leave the 1 there, and then do 8 plus 1, you have 19. I know that might be a stretch for some of you, but Stephen King has mentioned how Room 217 in uh, Room 217 in The Shining adds up to 19 also. Of course, it does not add up to 19, but if you take the number 2 and leave the number 2 alone and then add 17 to it, you have the number 19. So it is a stretch, but he has mentioned before how he will add numbers together to make that work. Also, a um, slight mention, I'm going to bring up The Shining, uh, is Greta and... Greta? Greta? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're twins uh, that are mentioned in The Institute. And Grady from The Shining also had twins. Uh, he was the uh, the caretaker that murdered his family before Jack Torrance and his family got there. So you have, it's Greta, G-R-E-T-A and G-R-E-D-A. So Greta and Greta? Odd enough. There is green everywhere in this book. Uh, there's a lot of green and there's a lot of green in The Talisman. There's a lot of green in Black House. Uh, both of those books are heavy on the green. Watch those Thursday theorists for more on that. But also, green is important through the Stephen King universe because he has an affinity for The Wizard of Oz. In fact, in Wizard and Glass, the fourth Dark Tower book, he ends up, that they end up, the, the quartet, Roland and his crew, end up at the at literal uh, Emerald City, castle, whatever you want to call it, um, from Oz. So that... I, I, I have to feel like green is important. In this one, you have a green corridor on page one, 107. Um, you have the mention of emerald a lot. The first time I saw it was on page 214. And then you have on page 297, wrapped in green canvas. Each one of these scenes are important to the story. So I have to feel like there's a reason for the green. There might not be, but this is Thursday theorist. This isn't Thursday facts. The levers and the breakers. Um, we'll talk about this because the ending of Black House is important for this book, I feel. It's also important for Revival, but at the end of Black House, I'm going to spoil the ending, uh, they get rid of the house. They break the spell or whatever, and all the kids are, are pouring out of it. Remember that. But before that, they're looking up and they're seeing all these children pulling these levers. Um, but then in the Institute, there's one point where Avery, they're connecting all of the houses they're, well, they're, they're connecting all of the institutes all around the world, and he sees all these levers being pulled. Now, in Black House, like I said, you have all of these kids that, that, le that, were, that were released from, uh, the, from Sheol at the end, which is basically you know, mid-world, uh, I, I guess it's that ver the version of Hell, uh, which is the landscape that, uh, what's his name, Jamie, I think, ends up in at the end of Revival. Uh, the reason that's important is there's a mention that there's institutes all over the world at the end of the institute. Um, there are mentions that there might be more than one black house. In this book, there's literally a mention of the black houses, multiple ones. There's a mention of uh, on the beam on page 368. 
So that's, a, a, I mean, this, that's another thing that Stephen King uses when he doesn't, when he's trying to loosely connect things. Like with Misery, I don't know if it's when he's trying to loosely connect things, but it's just, it's little throws, uh, little things that he throws out there. Um, in, he says it in Misery, he says it in Dolores Claiborne, he says it through several different books, he says, On the Beam. And I haven't found anybody um, that, can, that, that can confirm whether or not that used to be a saying, um, or if it's just King that uses that saying. Going back real quick to the Black House, there, in this book there's a thing called the Stasi Lights, or Stasi Lights, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but it's S-T-A-S-I, S-T-A-S-I. Um, these are little balls of light, multicolored lights, um, that, that the kids see when they are being injected, when they are being enhanced by the Institute to try and draw out their power more. Now this, this is important, I believe, because I think this is more instances of things like the dead lights, or the lights that were inside the knights at the end of the talisman, or uh, the creature and the entity known as Tack in Regulators, at the end he is reduced to nothing but balls of light. Pennywise, or the entity known as It, is just balls of light, the dead lights. Um, now each one of these lights have different colors. In the Tommyknockers, green once again is a very important, very important color in that book. In that one, the Tommyknockers, their psychic powers uh, leak and infect the people in the town. And one of my theories with the Tommyknockers is the reason why there's so much psychic activity in the state of Maine is because of the Tommyknocker ship. And it's been in the, it had been in the ground for so long, it had leaked out and infected the entire state just over the course of a, uh, over however many decades or however many millennia. We don't know how long that ship was in the ground. Now, another thing to mention as far as the colored lights are concerned is the mention of ruby red is mentioned several times. What, what, what is, what is ruby red? It's a uh, pink grapefruit, right? So you have Maryland's pink grapefruit from the Dark Tower series. And you have Ruby Red mentioned here, plus you have the Stasi lights. So I, I can't help but connect it all. It just, it feels right. It feels like that's what was meant to, um, to, to bring to mind. It feels like that's where Stephen King was going. And I feel like all of the stuff throughout the Dark Tower series, throughout Stephen King's work, can all come back to lights. And those balls of light, those lights are the power that are given by the balls that are mentioned in the Dark Tower series. Now we are going to go into the Hard Connect. All the stuff that I've been talking about before, other than maybe the On the Beam reference, all the stuff that I have talked about beforehand has been just my theories. A lot of that stuff is, is really reaching, especially like the Exit 181, I'm aware at how much I'm reaching there. But with this one, there's some Hard Connects in here, and I'm going to break out the book for this one. It's page 364 on the first edition, at least the American, uh, the U.S. first edition of the Institute. Okay, so on page 364 of the Institute, you have a paragraph where Annie is talking about a show, um, a podcast done by a character named Greg Allman uh, called The Outsiders. The Outsiders. And this is one of the things she mentions. I'm going to read the entire uh, dialogue here. She got up and shook out her serape. Is that how you pronounce that? I'm not sure. That's right. You tell Sheriff John. Y'all need to be on your guard. They're apt to come locked and loaded. There's a town in Maine, Jerusalem's lot, and you could ask the people who live there about the men in black cars. This is uh, one of several times Stephen King has mentioned throughout his career after uh, the release of Salem's Lot, what happened to the town. Uh, there's another short story that happens after Salem's Lot happened, and it's called One for the Road. I believe it's called. It's in Night Shift, um, if I get the title wrong. But uh, that story deals with a car that breaks down just outside of Salem's Lot, and it proposes that the vampires are still around. Well, in this one, we finally get mention of what happened to the town of Salem's Lot. Also, in, uh, let's see here, it's the Dark Tower 5, we are reintroduced to uh, Father Callahan from Salem's Lot, and he is a main character in the last three books of the Dark Tower series. Woo! That boy do be long-winded, though. Damn. 
Now on to viewer comments. The first comment I have is from longtime viewer and friend of mine, Pat Costin, and he had this to say. Multicolored lights show up in the raft also. Then we have this comment from T-Town Cowboy who brings up Bev's Diner. And yeah, I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, but it could possibly be tied into Beverly Marsh from it. Next, we have another comment from another longtime viewer. I always want to say user. Longtime viewer Pierce, who had this to say. Did I leave it out intentionally? No, I didn't. I just, I missed it. So, congratulations. Next. And finally, we have this comment from Cody Tidwell that brings up Zony Mart, which first appeared in the Mercedes trilogy or the Bill Hodges trilogy, if you prefer that. He thinks it was in The Outsider and is definitely in Kelly Braffitt's Save Yourself. And the reason why Kelly Braffitt is important is because Kelly Braffitt is Owen King's wife. Owen King, of course, is Stephen King's youngest son. I lied. There, there's one more, and it's, it's from this user. Sorry, I had to cut because I read the name Italian, Italian Herb and D's. D's what? Play it. D's what? Anyways, it says, also, one of the boys trying to run away from home in Dupre is named Roland. I know it's not a connection or anything, but I thought it was cool. I disagree with you. I fully think that the name Roland was used on purpose. But that's all the time I have for you today. <laughs> Sorry, I still have the giggles. But I need to know from you guys, did I miss anything? Uh, do you have any corrections of anything I said in this video? And the third one, of course, if you have your own theories for how the Institute ties in to the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower, please leave your comments down there where you leave your comments. The doobly-doo. But until next time... Sco